Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of First Impressions. Now I just experienced the delight of listening to the 50th anniversary edition of The Beatles, which is the self-titled release by The Beatles, 1968, otherwise known as The White Album. This was uh, another in the series of remixes, I believe is the correct term, that Giles Martin is spearheading. Basically, he's going back to the original tapes and doing a whole new mix. I will say that overall, the mix on the White Album isn't as profound as I felt it was on Sgt. Pepper's, and I think that's partly to do with the sophistication with that one year jump. They, uh, they actually spent a lot of time with the stereo mix, so it doesn't immediately stand out as, as different in the way that the Sgt. Pepper's mix did. You know, I kind of knew that going into it. It really wasn't a disappointment. There are moments on this that really um, stand out to me, like the bass on Dear Prudence. It gave me chills just hearing that because it was so like rich and, and thick and right there. Uh, and I will say that overall, I think there's less compression on this mix, like the, the the lows and the highs have a lot more room. I feel overall all the elements, all these different instruments have more space and you hear more, but it f doesn't feel cluttered, which I don't know how they do that. But the Escher demos, wow, what a, what a great experience. In the liner notes, they talk about how it was MTV Unplugged before that even existed. And it really is because so many of these songs are almost complete. Like they're almost, they could have, they could have released these demos on their own. I loved hearing kind of some of these songs in their earliest gestation, if you will. So let's break down the Escher demos track by track, starting with Back in the USSR. And what I love is how they start to vocalize the guitar solo to end the song. And it's sort of like them laying down the idea. And you can really hear that they're having fun on this song. That's what I really like. Back in the USSR. Track two is Dear Prudence, and oh my gosh, I love, love this version. My only gripe with it is I wish there was a little bit more percussion on here. It just feels like that element is missing. The guitars are great on here, and what's funny is that I play this song and it's it's so similar to the final version. However, there's a lot of elements that are missing, and my mind will play those sounds in my head as this song plays. It's so funny how, how, our, how our brains will do that. And the most surprising element is the voiceover at the very end. I was just blown away by that and I really, really enjoyed it. Sooner or later she was to go completely berserk under the care of Maharishi Mahesh Yoga. All the people around were very worried about the girl because she was going insane. Track three is Glass Onion, and oh, this had a real fun looseness to it. I love the chunky guitar on here. Um, it feels at moments like they're kind of discovering the song as they play, which lends this kind of unpredictability about it, which I really like. And the uh, the gibberish throughout just cracks me up. I really, really like this. Track four is Obladi Oblada, and this definitely has a campfire sing-along feel to it. And I'm gonna probably repeat myself a lot, but it's amazing how much was there in the very beginning. Like they really just embellished these demos and called it the White Album. And I, I love these uh, vocalized percussive elements that happen in, in very specific moments of this song. And it feels like this, these demos were very fun for the band, very freeing. Like they came back from India uh, rejuvenated 
even if they all didn't like exactly what went on, I know certain band members got more out of it than others, but I think overall it was good to have that escape. In a couple of years they have built a home sweet home. Track five is the continuing story of Bungalow Bill, and I just, I love hearing how this song started off because again, it's another one where all the elements are there. They just sort of smoothed it out. All the children sing, hey, Bungalow Bill, what did you kill? Another great element are the vocalized animal animal noises. I would have loved to see some footage of them recording this. They must have had a, a fun time. Bill and his elephants were taken by surprise. So Captain Marvel sat it right between the eyes. Track six is one of my favorite songs, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and I was not expecting it to be as fast as it was. I don't know why. At least to my ears, it feels like the final verse is different than what I've heard in other versions. I don't know, I could be totally wrong, uh, but overall I, I enjoyed kind of hearing the genesis of this song, like a real early version. It's, it's fascinating. I look at the trouble and hate that is raging while my guitar Opening up side two, we have Happiness as a Warm Gun, and this is almost like a different song. It was it, it was kind of shocking. I didn't recognize it at first, and I, I enjoy the bleakness of it. There's something about it that's very sparse that's missing from the final version. Unfortunately, this is really only half a song. It just, it ends way too quick. For the superior jumped the gun. Mother Superior jumped the gun. Yo, go, oh no, no. Track two is I'm So Tired, and man, I was not expecting this song to groove as much as it did. I really, really like this version. You know, three weeks, I'm going insane. I'll give you everything I've got for a little peace of mind. And the voiceover just killed me, man. When you show each one your charms. I wonder should I get a go to the funny bar. No, no, no. Track three is Blackbird and man this is just evidence of, of how good the Beatles were, how much they had when they went into the studio because this is near perfect. You almost didn't need to do anything to it. It's just beautiful. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Up next, we got Piggies, and it's pretty much all there. All the elements are there. It's it's the same song, essentially, although this one, uh, no pun intended, is a bit sloppy, at least to me. Like, they, it was a bit loose. Uh, there's a, it's kind of playful in that sense, but it's it's not as focused as it is on the album. You will see them out for dinner with the Piggy Wives. Up next, we got Rocky Raccoon, and again, I'm just so impressed how much was there from the beginning. They almost didn't need to re-record this. He threw first and shot, and Rocky collapsed in the corner. Up next, we got Julia, and I love this little blip of audio that they play right before they get into the song. Hello, Paul. All the elements are here on this demo. I'm just so impressed. Rounding right outside too, we got Your Blues. And again, this is really not that far off from what they ended up with. It's a little looser, a little rougher, but all the elements are there. Really dug it. Open up side three, we have Mother Nature's Son, and again, 
wow, wow. Just so impressed with the Beatles, hearing them kind of raw, unrehearsed like this, but yet you could take that song, release it, and it would still be a fantastic song. Up next, we got Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, and this one just feels like they hit record in the middle of a jam session. It just starts right away. It, it feels, it has a similar feeling to the final recorded version. However, this one kind of lacks a little bit of the intensity that that one has, and I think that's probably due to this being recorded with acoustic instruments. Take it easy. Wow, track three, Sexy Sadie. I was not expecting this to sound as different as it does. It's interesting to hear how kind of unrefined it was at this point. Like it wasn't quite the song that we know now, uh, but still worth a listen. Sexy Sadie, oh, the rules, day of the world, waiting for the lover. Track four is Revolution, and even stripped down with hand claps, this song still rocks. There's just something about it, especially these little vocalized bits. <laughs> even though I heard this song so many times, it feels very fresh and new. I don't know how, how that's even possible, but it's still a great song. Well, all I can tell you is whether you have to Track five, Honey Pie, my goodness. I <laughs> I actually, I think I like this version more. It feels less saccharine than the final version, especially with the vocal effect on Paul. It just, it feels a little bit more uh, natural, impromptu, if you will. And I love these uh, vocalized horn parts that happen. And the guitar bass walk downs are so good on here. Like this is a fantastic version on its own. Totally worth a listen. Da, da, da. Track six, Cry Baby Cry, oh, is still so good. It, it, it retains the this intensity that the uh, final version has. Even without the piano, it, it really holds its own. The queen was in the parlor playing piano for the children of the king. Cry baby cry. Closing side three, we have Sour Milk Sea. And to be honest, I never heard this song before. And I'm not just, I, and I don't mean the, the demo before because most people haven't heard this, but I'm talking about the, the Jackie Lomax song that George Harrison gave to him. However, I don't like that version. I, I just recently listened to it in comparison after I heard this song. Vocally, Jackie Lomax just doesn't hold a candle. I'm sorry, no disrespect to him, but uh, even in this demo form, I, I still prefer the Beatles version. Opening up side four, we have Junk, and I am blown away this didn't make the cut onto the White Album. I have no idea why. It is beautiful, stunning, masterwork by Paul McCartney. Thankfully, he did use this song on his solo debut, McCartney, that came out in 1970, and it's a fantastic version on there, but still, I encourage you guys, check out this song. Track two is Child of Nature, and this song would eventually morph into Jealous Guy, which would be featured on John Lennon's album Imagine. And I gotta say, this one's got sophistication, pathos, it, it's got a great melody, and yet it was left off. I, I would really be curious to know 
what that conversation was like when they were deciding what to keep and what to leave off this album. It could be that the title of it is too similar to Mother Nature's Son. That could be it. But uh, otherwise, this is a complete song as it is in this demo. And hearing the Beatles version of this is fantastic. And I'm so happy to have it. Yes, the dream I had was true. I'm just a child of nature. Track three is Circles. This is another George Harrison tune that he would eventually revisit for his uh, 1982 album. And I gotta say, I don't like that version as much as I enjoy the starkness of this. It's just, this is George playing the organ and there's something very, it has a, a psychedelic tinge to it that's missing on his later re-recording of it. But it would have been interesting to hear what uh, George Martin would have done with this, you know, maybe added some strings and hearing uh, some more contributions from Paul, Ringo, and John. That would have been really, really cool. Friends go, friends go, cycle round and round in circles. Track four is a Abbey Road cut. This is Mean Mr. Mustard, and it's fascinating to hear an, this early of a version of it. I mean, you can tell this song was not done yet, but the seeds are being planted, if you will. Track five, we have Polythene Pam, another Abbey Road song. And I was struck by how much this has an early Beatles feel to it, especially with that Bo Diddley beat. That was something I did not pick up on with the eventual release of this on Abbey Road. Well, you should see Polythene Pam. She's so good looking, but she looks like a man. Well, you should see it exact, just in the Polythene back. Yes, you should see Polythene Pam. Track six is not guilty, and Harrison would go on to release this on his own, but this version of it is so good. It's complete, it's there, it's so well polished that it just shows you how hard it must have been to come up with the final track listings for the White Album, I'm telling you. I'm really sorry for your aging head, but like you heard me say, I'm not guilty. Final song is What's the New Mary Jane, and this was very close to becoming part of the official recording. However, it was a last minute cut. I'm not exactly sure why. You can hear the final version on the Anthology 3 collection. The final version has kind of a bad trip feeling about it. There's an uneasiness that uh, this one doesn't have. It's more playful, it's more fun. It has very much a John feeling about it. So if you like Lennon songs, you're really gonna like this version. Not a shame, Mary Jane had the pain of the party. She liked to be married with Yeti. He cooking such groovy spaghetti. So yeah, 27 songs, oh my goodness. How lucky are we to be living in this day and age as Beatles fans to have stuff like this surface, stuff that I don't, I, I never thought would come to see the light of day, and yet we have professionals like Giles Martin coming in and cleaning them up and releasing them in this beautiful packaging. It's so fantastic. I, I'm just so thrilled. I highly encourage you guys to check them out at the very least. You don't have to go and buy this. If, you, if you're short on cash, you can listen to it on Spotify. It's totally worth it. I, I highly encourage you to do so. And while you're at it, go check out all the outtakes because that is so fascinating. There is a lot to digest. Again, I'm just scratching the surface of the White Album 50th Anniversary Edition. This is just the vinyl deluxe set. There is a six CD, one DVD version with a booklet that is just enormous. I didn't spring for that, but uh, I'm sure many of you have, and you can let me know what you think down in the comments below. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everybody, thanks again for checking out my first impressions of the Escher demos. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to check out my review of the White Album, and you can also check out my Beatles playlist for more great Beatles content. If you liked what you saw, I put out new videos every Tuesday and sometimes Fridays.